Hey, it's that time of year again. In today's bass guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Do They Know It's Christmas from Band-Aid in 1984. I'll see you inside the lesson. Hey, it's James here from eBay's Guitar, and we're hearing Christmas songs on the radio all the time at the moment. And if you listen closely, there's some incredible bass playing on some of these records. And that's why Christmas songs are often some of my biggest guilty pleasures. So today we're looking at Do They Know It's Christmas, which has two bass parts on. The first one is a program synthesizer part, played on an Oxford synthesizer, but also there is a live bass part on there too, played by John Taylor by, from Duran Duran. But before we hit the lesson content, I'd love to know what is your favorite Christmas song and Christmas bass part? Let me know in the comments below. So the great thing about this song is Phil Collins lays down an absolutely rock solid, very simple drum part, which means as bass players, we can have a lot of fun and a lot of freedom and flexibility when we play this track. So I'm gonna be looking at this mainly from the perspective of the chords. So if you wanna grab my own personal chord chart, which I've used on hundreds of gigs to play this song, make sure you click the link in the description below and I'll send it to your email inbox. So first of all, we're going to look at the four bar introduction and 16 bar verse one. The whole of this song is in the key of C major, which means all of our bass notes are derived from the C major scale. So we start off with four bars of C as the introduction, and the bass part is very simple but very effective. All we need to do is play a quarter note on beat one of the bar. So this is what the first four bars sound like. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Four. So make sure you play that quarter note to the full duration. So it starts on beat one and it gets cut off right at the beginning of beat two. Now let's take a look at the first verse. So there's a four bar chord sequence to begin with, which is a bar of F, a bar of G, a two bars of C like that, and then it repeats again. And now this idea of just playing one quarter note on the first beat of each bar is within the first eight bars. Then to carry on after that, we play an F, a G, a C, and then an F like that, and they all last one bar each. And then we go to a D minor, and then to a G, and that's nearly there. And then in the last two bars of this 16 bar section, the program synthesizer groove comes in like this. So I'm gonna talk about how to play that in just a second, but let's hear what the introduction and verse one sound alike along with the backing track. So let's look at verse two now. And this is where the lyric, but say a prayer comes in. And this is practically identical to verse one, but there's one small difference with the chord sequence. And that is on bar 16, instead of playing a C, we play an F. But the big difference from a groove perspective is we play this disco bass line or synth bass line all the way through, which sounds like this. And this is actually quite tricky to play. And this is a really great workout for any bass player. It's very simple rhythmically because all it is is an eighth note and two sixteenth notes. So to put that together, you end up with this. But the critical thing to making this work from a technique perspective is you always have to go first finger and then play the first finger again and then play the second finger with your plucking hand. So it's one, one, two, one, one, two. 
So what I suggest first of all is really slowing this down to begin, begin with and just gradually working the tempo up. If you can't play it, what I suggest is simply playing pumping eighth notes all the way through. Make them really short and punchy so you could play this instead and it will work just as well. What I like to do as a bass player and to make it a little bit kind of more fluid and a bit more improvised as a real bass player would play it instead of a synthesizer is start adding in some fills and variations kind of in a slightly Motown vibe. So to demonstrate this over the chord sequence I'm going to play it twice. The first time I'm going to stick strictly to the synthesizer part and this will be quite a technical challenge but then I'm going to start breaking out to show you the kind of things that I would play on a gig. So the next section that we're going to look at is what I call the bridge. Now there are lots of different sections in this song and to a certain extent some of the names are quite arbitrary but this is the simplest way of identifying what I think are the different sections. So this is where the lyric and the bells are ringing it come in. So this is an eight bar section which starts off on a D and then goes to a G and then a C and an F chord. That's the first four bars so it sounds like this. And then just simply finish off, finishes off with another four bars which are D minor, G and two bars of C which sound like this. So let's put that together so you can hear what it sounds like with the backing track. So that's the bridge section. Next up, we're going to look at the middle. But first of all, I'd love to ask you if you're enjoying this lesson, please make sure you subscribe to the e bass guitar YouTube channel because we release a lesson just like this designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player every single week where we teach all of the most important skills players need when they're in the early phases of learning how to play the bass guitar. There is a red button somewhere around this video so you'll be the first to know when a new lesson is released. So the middle section as I call it is a 16 bar chord sequence and this is where the lyric and there won't be snow in Africa comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into four four bar chord sequences. So the first four bars are simply a bar of F, a bar of G, and then two bars of C. And then the next four bar chord sequence is exactly the same thing again, is a bar of F, a bar of G, and two bars of C. And then the next four bar chord sequence is practically the same. It is a bar of F, a bar of G, and then a bar of C, and then we go to an F chord at the end like though. And then for the final four bars we go to a D minor and then we go to a G and then we go to a C for a bar. Then on the final bar of the sequence we get two beats of F and then two beats of C. It's worth mentioning on those final two bars that's where the iconic synthesizer hook comes in that we all know from the end of the song. So make sure you listen out for that. So let's hear what this section sounds like in context with the pumping disco synth groove. Mm -hmm. 
So only two more sections to go. I've called this the breakdown and it's six bars long. And this is where you hear the lyric, here's to you, raise a glass for everyone. So there's a new chord here, which is an A minor, but there's also a new feel too. You get this wonderful halftime feel, which sounds incredible. So let's look at the first two bars. This is a bar of A minor and then a bar of G. And the bass line perspective is we just play two eighth notes at the beginning of each bar. So the first two bars sound like this. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Then we repeat it. Two, three, four. And then we drop down to an F for a bar and then a G for a bar. And that's the end of the section. But there's this beautiful little bass line that I want you to listen out for that John Taylor plays. So he plays the F for two beats and then we drop down to an E on beat three, and then an F on beat four, and then that takes us up to the G. So you end up with this line, one, two. Listen out, because it really does sound great. So let's hear what this six bar section sounds like in context. So we're on the home straight now, and there's only one four bar chord sequence that you need to learn, and you can play the rest of the song because this covers the anthemic synthesizer solo, but also the chorus at the end where the lyric is feed the world. Don't forget, if you're a Bass Lab Plus member, you can get all of the backing tracks used in this lesson inside the backing track vault. If you haven't joined yet, make sure you jump over to eBass Guitar and check out the Bass Lab Plus membership. So the final four bar chord sequence starts off with a bar of C, and then in bar two, we have two beats of F and two beats of C. In bar three, we have the same thing again, which is two beats of F and two beats of C. And then in bar four, we have two beats of D minor and then two beats of G. You could simply play the disco electro programmed groove over the top, which would sound like this. This is a point where you can really start breaking out and have some fun. And this is a kind of some of the ideas that I might play. So really have some fun and break out. So I'm gonna leave you and I'm gonna have a little jam over this final section so you can hear the kinds of things that I would play. Guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. The Christmas Jumper will be back out next year. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the eBass Guitar YouTube channel because we're releasing lessons like this every single week. Also, make sure you download my free chord chart for this lesson so you can see everything we've covered today written out. Also, don't forget to jump over to eBay's Guitar and check out the Bass Lab Plus membership if you want to build more on what we've covered in this lesson today. There's a link in the description below where you can take it free for a 14 day trial. That just leaves me to wish you guys all a very, very Merry Christmas and I look forward to a ton more lessons on the eBay's Guitar YouTube channel next year. Cheers for now. <laughs>